To enjoy this and other great episodes on Patreon, check out the link in the description and subscribe via the Black Kluge tier for full access to over 100 exclusive episodes. For those of you who would like some QF swag on TeePublic t-shirts, magnets, mugs, what have you, also click on the link in the description. First of all, the nerve of your fucking ass to call me and tell me your fucking problem. It's not my... Fuck off. Get lost. Get off. Take your stupid subscription and cancel. Who cares, Dina? Fuck you. Fuck you, cunt. Fuck you. Get Fuck lost. You. Don't do my audience. I'll do my audience whatever I want. I'll piss on this audience if I do. I do have uh, issues about people leaving me. I want to control everyone in my atmosphere. I want, I am a puppet master and I want everyone to be a puppet. He was saying goodbye to me and he leaned in for a kiss and I smiled so big that he literally kissed my teeth. Um, I cheated on every one of my boyfriends except for Howard. For real? Mm-hmm. The really? day I met Howard, my cheating days and You were a cheater? I was a cheater. I hate Beth. I think she's only after Howard's money and she's, <laughs> and she's a real horse face. Can you bang any of those stripper broads on the, uh, on the show? Teresa Lynch said you banged up. Teresa who? Ooh, she was on here. She told she was in your movie, me. Private Parts. <laughs> oh, Amy. Oh, no, no, no. Teresa, the, the one with the, oh, one no. the little ass. She, she never she, said that. She told That's me. That's a lie. Uh, to admit you're lying. Uh, That's Tony. She called Tony. Did I ever bang Teresa Lynn? Take a New Jersey. Welcome to the wrap-up Which, show. Does any of you gentlemen believe that Beth actually loves Howard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's, let's cut right to the nitty-gritty. Artie and I spent last weekend with him, and if she's in love, then she should get a fucking Oscar. Right. If she's not in love, then she should get an Oscar. she's in love, she should get an Oscar. Uh, <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> Say, uh-oh, here comes Beth. Howard is Beth. Howard is Beth. I'm knitting baby booties. <laughs> what are you doing, uh, Beth? I'm knitting baby booties. <laughs> I could just see our blonde, our blonde curly haired son. At least you don't have to pretend your dog is actually a child. <laughs> Beth once even said to me, it was funny too, because what Beth once said to me, you know, I wouldn't mind being engaged forever. Like, like this was, you know, years ago. Was, I just think the ring is so great. I would love to, you know, it's romantic. And, and it's romantic yeah. and it's kind of cool. But the second I uh, popped the question, she was like, well, let's get on the phone and tell everyone we're getting married. I went, whoa, whoa. Yeah. no, 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 we're not getting married. We're engaged. <laughs> There's no such thing. You know what it is? I'm so self-important. I just don't even remember meeting anyone. She was up here one day and I introduced you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I'm, cured. I'm not going to be cured of any. I am me. I am just going to psychiatrist so that I can feel better about certain issues in my life. That's all. Welcome, ladies and gents, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me for this continuation of the Hurricane Sandy thing is Sam. How are you, Sam? Oh, just great. <laughs> when last we left off, uh, we were going into the Doug Goodstein part. And unfortunately, this is the fucking visual you have to deal with. Oh. <laughs> JD and all his pomp and circumstance. <laughs> yeah. What is that? Like he's Robin's like, hey, I'm right. just doing my job. No, well, you, most Robin... people are like, thank you, thank you. like you're supposed to praise them for what they get paid for. I know it was weird. Like Scott finally showed up today, and it was like it was almost like he was waiting for me to say, "Oh, you're back. Thank you." <laughs> the prodigal son has returned. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. You were waiting yeah. for Elijah. Well, wait no more. <laughs> like I, like you know, we needed every man we could get here. Right. No. Oh. I knew not. Because it's so hard to put on this show. Clearly, it wasn't. <laughs> Since you guys had half the staff or less, and it went off fine, I noticed nothing different except for Shuli's pauses from not being able to say anything funny. And Howard's like, if this is like the the two towers when uh, they've got to fight all those, <laughs> they, this, they've got to fight all these, <laughs> the, uh, what do you call it? I can't remember the, the, uh, the fucking elves. They got to get all the elves together to uh, fight off the hoarding, uh, invading army here. We needed everybody all hands on deck. Yeah. No, you really didn't actually. I mean, the, what does Howard need in there? A script? I he know. needs his mic settings. He needs a limo service. I mean, he he's the most high maintenance part of his own show. He really is acting like it was the Titanic going down. It's yeah. Like, you were fine. <laughs> and by the way, if you weren't fine, why would you spend all episode complaining? I, I Yeah. You got there. Yeah. 
Not to depend on him. I knew he wasn't coming in. I knew there was going to be zero effort there. It would be like a Jewish holiday. We don't celebrate. And by the way, all these people who are writing me hate letters, you're so fucked up. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like, hey, Howard, you expect everyone. I don't expect anything. I told everybody. <laughs> my face, your face. We're both just like <laughs> Fillmore and I both just took a look at each other and our mouths are agape. <laughs> this is what? like HD HD is it HD or HG? It's HD Tutor. HG Tutor. HG Tutor. Okay, I keep the HG Wells. I should remember it that way. Um he, he would it's a field day. It's like a it's like a master class in gaslighting and double speak. Yes, just like Harry and Megan. Yep. It's unbelievable. Please, yeah, it is. Be safe. I'm coming in to do the show. I'm coming in to do the show because I'm I'm in the city and if I can get there I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. I didn't yell at it. I'm a pretty nice boss actually. I, I didn't. Again, <laughs> hotel room. <laughs> Ask Scott Salem what he thinks about that. Oh my god. And I'm a gymnast. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Fucking hell. Rooms were offered. Yeah. It wasn't like get here, come hell or high water, and we don't care what you have to go through to do it. Yeah, I like that I'm the asshole for saying, uh, you know, th but there are people like JD who just are here. You just know they're going to be here. <sighs> That's all. And he does JD has nothing else in his life. He's also <laughs> an enormous sycophant. And you think you don't think JD at this point, as as much of a fuck as, you know, being a fucking full sale graduate, um, doesn't already know that if he doesn't come in, the amount of shit he's going to get is not worth any shit he gets if he goes in. And JD is also the type of person that doesn't care if he sleeps on a couch in a green room. I mean, right. he's got nothing to come home to. He's got nowhere to go. You know, glow no sticks and EDM by himself. It's just weird. Yeah. He's also about as, he's about as spineless as a jellyfish. So, you know, like, what, what kind of resistance are you going to get from him? This is the only time JD shines, though. If you notice, like, JD shines only when everybody else fucks up. So, JD loves to come in for these moments because good old reliable JD. So, he gets to get, you know, his little bit of fill that has to last him because it's going to be hell for the next few months when things are regular and back to normal again. That's a good observation. He's probably going to go, yeah, like, that'll do him for the year, that one compliment. Yep. And if if you're if the praise is not so effusive from your boss and you do get it, that one little bit you get means a hell of a lot more. Like, I guarantee um, he was yeah. he was thrilled. There was a hurricane and people weren't coming in. It's it's showtime. JD's right. reliable in here. It's like, it's like that Jason looking guy that gets a smile from a hot chick in a restaurant. And they're like, OK, that'll do me for a few months. Yes. You know, yeah, exactly. Except, you know, it's not a hot chick. It's a, it's a wig wearing hump. And the other reason uh, in the other compliment JD always likes when he gets is when Howard, I don't know if it's a mentoring kind of feeling, but he always says, you know, you remind me of myself when I was young, like awkward and goofy, but it's not really. I don't know why he tries to relate to JD like that because they're nothing alike. Well, he, he, you know, if, if he wants to go into the whole dork and un, uh, like, uh, but then you get you get the narrative. I used to fuck models in college, but no, if you remind you of JD, JD wasn't fucking any, he wasn't fucking, maybe he was fucking his hand in college. That's about it. Yeah. And JD is an actual hard worker, like in a sense where he does show up to the same job. He goes to work. He lives in the city. He puts himself out there. Howard wasn't a teenager living in the city looking for radio jobs. You know what I mean? Well, it, it, and when we say hard worker, you wouldn't get that look. You wouldn't get that impression from looking at him. But there's never a situation on the show where he doesn't have a clip ready for Howard. It's usually an organizational problem, like what page is it on? But you can count on JD to have these stupid clips. And that is, you know, you think that's a pointless job. But for that show, it was necessary all the time. And yet to be on top of it, I mean, we know about clipping and we got we have actual jobs that we go to. And this is an extra thing. And it's a lot of work. And for JD, I'm sure he did what he was supposed to do quite effectively. Right. And he always was on time, if not early, and always stayed late. He's the one helping Robin and who did have forgot her fucking pass key. And he had to use his to get her in the building. That's right. And remember, she was almost upset with him for having. Yeah. She treated him like shit for her forgetting. I, I, yes. I couldn't believe that. I was like, you fucking asshole why are you I, being upset with him oh like, i believe it's, it it's it was crazy. She, he was he was showing her up 
I, I know by that, be, but I, I was by, like, I, you, I would have been, thank God you conscientious. have a By being conscientious, you, in fact, are showing the narcissist what they've done incorrectly. And you've ruined their entire vision of their own whatever illusion of uh, of what they're all that they're all together. That's so true. Yeah. I didn't expect to be praised because he came in. That's his job. Yeah. You're a fucking great employee. <laughs> Thank you. You're beautiful. <laughs> You're beautiful, Robin. <laughs> I can see the beauty in you. <laughs> oh, you know Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Believe me. In in keeping with our painting theme, JD is the equivalent of a human Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> she really is. I yeah. mean, but this this day is going to last JD all year. You're yep. right. Always look, yeah, I think so. <laughs> at myself on Kimmel, and I'm like, I'm so ugly <laughs> and disgusting. And I even oh. said to Beth, I go, I, I, I'm so ugly. And she goes, you look really handsome on yeah. Kimmel. I go, no, there was nothing good there. <laughs> And you know what? Same with you, JD. I, I, this is how I see myself through too. the through the bloody hands, <laughs> the, you know the, the the disgusting hairdo, the the horrible clothes, the weight gain. <laughs> Forgot facial hair. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, the the, the totally. ridiculous Sorry. facial hair. I, I I see the beauty. You're on my you. list, really. <laughs> 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 through the Frito shirt that you wear every day. Cheetos. <laughs> Frito. What? Cheetos. Cheetos. Oh, Cheetos. 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 I haven't worn that shirt in years. Oh, I can't even fit into it. <laughs> I can't be, imagine the shock and horror most of these people felt when they realized they have to start wearing blazers and polos and whatever. Can you imagine when you literally look like a mattress with glasses at work every day? <laughs> what I don't understand, well, to me, that's the thing that that kind of uh, it irks me. I mean, because all it is like you, the literal difference between what you wore yesterday and the next day is you put on a blazer over a T-shirt when you were already wearing a T-shirt with your jeans. And all of a sudden, you know, that's the deal breaker for some of these idiots. Gary, bef when he was still single, I think before he was dating Mary or while he was dating Mary, he do you remember he used to come in with a blazer in the 90s? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then he down he, shirts. He got he got comfortable. Yeah, that too. He got comfortable. He got too comfortable. And then he went the schlub look. Yeah. And the, so when he had to go back to blazer, I'm sure it irked him because he's thinking, well, I look like a suit. Well, you're not wearing a suit. You're just being like, this is, you know, the old 80s casual look. Yeah. I remember he used to wear belts and stuff. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. <laughs> he's probably suspenders, but oh, well. Um, but uh, with JD here, I mean, JD always looks like he's been rolled. I know. It's a hamper. He's a living yeah. hamper. <laughs> <laughs> really? You think he's only missing some odd socks static clinging to him on the on the arm? If, if he showed up to a Halloween party and said, I'm a hamper, I'd believe him. <laughs> and Pig Pen. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason. Uh, Fritos, Cheetos, what's the difference? I have Doritos pants. No, on. but honestly, I mean, I, I just think the world of you. Uh, I really do. I think the world of the show and, uh, you know. Yeah. Everyone As opposed here? to high pitch Mike Morales, oh like God. like maybe maybe it's time for him to leave. <laughs> he started tweeting nasty shit about me. Really? Yeah, yeah. And like, you know what, dude? That's how you. First of all, I don't know how many people were looking to employ high pitch Mike Morales and putting him on the air, and putting him on the air, make, giving him a life, and you know, giving him a life. What are you, is, him. are you childbearing hips, Howard? What are you oh, talking you, about? Oh, but I thought Howard's not his boss. No, that's right. You're right. I forgot. He's not. Oh, but he is now because he, he because he's mad you on at Twitter. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Now he is. It's great. Oh, he put, gets on the Twitter and he's like, "Kudos to David Letterman for putting on a great late show with minimal staff without slamming those who couldn't make it in." Like, you know what? Why don't you say that to my face? Don't fucking put it on Twitter. No, put it on Twitter. Believe it or not, I whatever I do impacts your life. You know. Every fan you turn off, High Pitch Mike. Did High Pitch Mike make it to work? This was the beginning of the end. Right here, right now. Now, oh, yeah. I don't know how close he was to thinking about firing all these people, but I swear to God, this was the beginning of the end for that Howard TV crew. Oh, absolutely. And and Mike, uh, High Pitch, according to the Reddit mole, High, uh, High Pitch Mike and Tracy both left without having jobs. I just up. think, I mean, that's terrible. But I just think to myself, when was the the when was the starting point for all of this 
sort of feeling. I mean, we could say when Artie left, there's other jumping points, but this one right here, publicly being humiliated on Twitter and everybody knows what Mike Morales is saying and everybody's emailing the show about what a piece of shit you are. So not only is Mike Morales saying this, but Howard's also getting tons of emails saying the same thing from fans who might have not even seen Mike Morales' tweet. So this is an avalanche in his head right now. And this yep. is the beginning of the end. <laughs> You've got the discard. This is the process of the discard. It's all this passive aggressive, really. Well, sometimes it's just aggressive. It's nothing about it, um, but passive because they're not in the studio or he's talking about people that, you know, are at home, you know, or they're, they're not right there immediately in the studio. And he's hidden behind, of course, monitors and mics and all that stuff. But the think of Shitgate for Tim Sabian, mm -hmm. like. Shitgate was in, entirely composed of, it was entirely constructed Horrible. around, let's get rid of Tim. Let's debase him on the air to fuck with him and get him the fuck, get him to, to leave so I don't have to fire him. It, that's exactly what it was. It was psychological torture for as long as possible. Drag him, beat him, tar and feather him as long as we can. Oh, he's still not leaving? Fuck. It's, it's and just... My and high pitch Mike, God, you know, good, good for him. Kudos to him because, and he's the, he's at the last part of it on the wrap up show where he defends it and says, "Look, we are employed by Sirius XM, not Howard." He claims he is, we, they, you know, they're whatever, they they employ us, not him. And and Gary's like, "Well, you know, uh, you're he's still your boss." Like, well, no, no he can't have it both ways. He you wants to, have no. So so what he's saying in, in essentially, and I have a clip that I just found where. You know, I made sure you had a job here. So you do have control over who can come and who can go. And he's always had control. But that's the point. It's he wants to have control when he wants to. But when he doesn't want to, you're not even my employee. You work for Sirius TV. I don't know. And 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 therefore, if he controls who can be there, who's to say who in God's name believes that he doesn't control their fucking salaries? Of course. Of course. You right. think Sirius I, XM is going to be like... Let me think of the salaries for Mike Morales. No, Howard has a hand in it. I guarantee it. Right. And, and, and uh, guys, it's it's off topic again, but I, I totally believe it. It was all a matter of him. They gave him a pot of money. Then he paid them so that it would come out of – he paid them back. Like he gives them from that pot to Sirius, and he allocates how much money they're giving to each employee. So even though on the paycheck it says Sirius and then Sirius XM later on, it's all determined by Howard. Well, I think that's that, another way that he finagled somehow to benefit himself, whether it be tax write-offs or whether it be something. There is no other reason for him to split that up all of a sudden and have that serious XM be the overarching people who are in charge of that department, even though it never was like that. I mean, it was right. the E! show. But then when they moved over there, the, uh, there had to be something where he wanted control of it, but he doesn't want to sign the paychecks. Yeah, and I think uh, there's a certain amount of knowledge he had at K Rock over what people made, uh, but also about what you know. It, it depended who it was, but then he wanted ultimate control. He absolutely wanted it to be uh, like he he had hiring and firing power to a certain extent, but with the salaries, I don't know how much he had control over. I'd say he had more than people believe, and at Sirius, he had 100% total control over it. Well, there had to be some sort of benefit to him to split it up like that. I wonder if it has to do with insurance or something or mm -hmm. I don't yep. know. Yep. Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> he did and, not. So, okay. So See, that's right, that's right. why he's doing that. He yeah, feels right. nope. guilty. So he's slamming you. Uh, you know, single guy living in an apartment. He couldn't get into work. Yeah. What was and he he, where does he live in Manhattan? Yeah. Well, from, from what well, I guess what? Consider yourself slammed, dude. <laughs> you know. How brave. <laughs> Do for the week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll I think Mike Morales <laughs> criticizing me. You know what? Here's when you can criticize me. When you've kept a radio show going for 35 plus years. Oh. Uh, kept people employed. Okay. And this, this, he does this in that, in that episode where we, we, uh, we haven't covered it, but we will of him being criticized by the staff behind the scenes, like with a, a modulator where they all said, you know, oh, this is what I, my problem with Howard. And he said the same thing to Brandano when he said you wouldn't have the black keys on. Yep. Um, he can't, and he can't take the criticism, let alone the public flogging. And, you know, this is, 
This is just Howard. He's a fucking tantrum throwing baby. He's going to take mm -hmm. no criticism. He's going to yep. deflect all of it. It's everybody else's fault. You're all ungrateful pieces of shit, even though I threaten your jobs every five years during contract time and in between no. sometimes. Yes. And by the way, yeah, and you're never going to know whether you're getting rehired again. I keep you purposely in the dark to keep you guessing, keep you stressed, keep you fucking panicking. And so ultimately the the real heroes of the show are those that manage to leave and ma maintain some type of success that's why billy west is revered i agree e even now and you sit for four and a half hours every day and try to figure out what's going to make an audience entertained and laugh so that we can continue working Fuck. and if everything i say doesn't come out to your liking or perfectly try it sometimes yeah does go he hate a, doing the post agt show does yeah. he hate all the other things that go, have come from this go to a small market oh you mean these free shows that he's not even getting paid to, to do for your and fucking is, channel and this is a straw man argument an emotional blackmail and professional blackmail so you're not allowed to complain and point out the obvious of howard stern's hypocrisy and treating his employees like obvious shit during a hurricane but in case you do decide to point it out because it's so outrageous and over the top and terrible, we're going to blackmail you with your little side gigs that you do for free that you enjoy. That's what he's doing right now. You know what and I'm Robin. thinking? The par you know what I'm thinking of a parallel? Number one, Ellen, obviously, but also the mm -hmm. recent Jimmy Fallon thing. Ooh, yeah. And the idea that there must be an HR, but it's clearly toothless. Like most of these professional atmospheres with people who run their show like an iron fist, smile yeah. when the camera's on and scary when the cameras are off. Yep. Convince a program director to put you on the air and let me see you get ratings and let me see you build a career. So easy. You know, if you're going to just ride off of my coattails, don't, you don't have any right to criticize me. Ever. Because really, while he you slams you, he right. didn't fire you. No. If he slams you, he didn't even mention you. Yeah. That might be why you're upset. Right. You were so unmessed, <laughs> you weren't even mentioned. He, he, he didn't come in Monday and Tuesday. It's not like he lives far. He's in Washington Heights somewhere. Oh, you God. know, I mean, like, get over yourself. Uh, don't sit and criticize me. What a fucking well, baby. Well, here's the other thing. Robin's right. He didn't mention his name. He just said... A passive aggressive thing, something Howard would do, by the way. A, a master of passive aggressive. Gladly. Howard yes. loves slamming people. He was mm -hmm. thrilled to take Ellen down as far and as long as he could. He loved it. He relished in it. And yep. what Howard, should you not make fun of Ellen because she has a TV career and you you don't? Yeah. <laughs> Your logic is impeccable as always. Thank you. Because uh, while you were at home, I'm sitting here trying to entertain our audience. Keeping the lights on. And failing. You don't get years. that right. You criticize. JD can criticize me. Ah, right, fuck you. Believe Good. Me. JD, but the, by your own logic, JD didn't run a show, get ratings, become a success. So what the fuck are you talking about? I didn't know Howard was the Constitution giving away rights here. <laughs> this no, is, no You kidding, don't have yeah. that right. I'm sorry. Right. Did you did you suddenly scratch off freedom of speech from the Constitution, Howard? I I, I for, must have must have not heard that. I, sorry. Yeah. Did you did you fill out the requisition forms that toilet paper? Well, then you're wiping your ass with your fucking hands <laughs> until I say differently, asshole. J totally. David Letterman wanted to criticize those people. Right. But yeah, he me. was there. I know Letterman. And I know a lot about him. Believe me, he was criticizing those people. Yeah, he didn't do it on the air. And you know what? Their... How about you send him another painting for his wife? You fuck off. I hate him I so much. Oh, such a cunt. I, I understand yes. Letterman. Yeah. I hope I hope They'll Letterman have pissed on it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's in the bathroom. Oh, you know, when you close the door to the hamper, there's a painting on the door going <laughs> into it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, he, he fucks them. <laughs> it's a whole other level. And bend over. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, now let me show you my gay tat. <laughs> oh, no. I love that. Oh, <laughs> he Jesus. had to do that. Scribe on fettuccine. <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. He's such a great guy. No, he fucks you when you're an intern. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's a wonderful guy. What? what like, he's what's terrific. The, What's the difference between, okay, yeah, he had relationships with employees. That's bad. 
You trotted out unpaid interns in bikinis. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You fucking have people showing their cocks and then having cocks shoved in their face, taint shoved in their face. For a As television ball, ball licking ball. I, licking. I must have missed the Letterman bit where uh, who's the who's the guy with the band, <laughs> the bald guy. <laughs> oh, oh, Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer. I must have missed the bit where Paul Schaefer puts his taint on J Lo. I mean, like, right? Don't you don't you remember when his head writer uh, they they played anal ring toss and threw the, well you know <laughs> <laughs> the rings at their head writer's asshole. Yeah, I must have missed that day where oh, where fuck. Paul Shaver's deciding to conduct the band nude. Yeah, with baloney being thrown at his ass. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, like yeah. A fuck him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dave is so wonderful. Okay, hi, Pitch Mike. Get a job with him. <laughs> Let's see if he wants your ass. Oh, my God. My staff. <laughs> Gary was uh, Gary was on wrap up show with John Hine and they were talking I, about I tried to get you know into to listen to that but I had some things to do and it was already over before I could hear what it they said It was a good show but it, it's on replay Robin so that's not an excuse fuck off I actually think after Howard said the fuck the intern comment about Letterman oh he actually fucks his staff or whatever I, I you know how J Lo hired John Melendez if I were Letterman I would have hired high pitch Mike he would have been hilarious during some sort they could have used him for some wacky bits just looking at <laughs> high pitch Mike is hilarious he came on the screen with that button down shirt and the googly eyes it's hilarious to look at. You, by the way, you did you, you did just a verbal you did a little a verbal slip and you said when J Lo hired John, <laughs> and I thought oh. the imagery would be perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I said J Lo in the other sentence, and I just yeah. I don't know why I said that. When when Leno, Jay yeah. Leno, J Lo, <laughs> could you imagine J Lo hey, hiring she, that sweaty oh. monster? <laughs> Talk to my agent, Mr. Melendez. <laughs> J-Lo won't work for less than that scale. Come on. Come on, guys. Work with me. (laughs) Oh, my God. She's sticking up for her people. You know, she's, you know, she's sticking up for a fellow uh, Puerto (laughs) Rican-American. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever. Jesus Christ. Boys did a good job. And um, (laughs) it was funny because they were trying to figure out who was going to get it the worst. (laughs) <laughs> Stuttering John is J-Lo's publicist. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> ah. well, which one is that, Gar? Which which clip? Number five. Five, okay. There so is, who do you, those oh, his shoulder So who do you father. think Howard is going to give the hardest time or is really the most disappointed in? Is it Gary? Is it Doug? Or is it Scott Salem? Who- yeah, Doug Goodstein, I don't get it all. That guy, I don't get. Is he here today even? Or did you yeah, just figure yeah, we'll finish here. out the week? He's here. Yeah. And incidentally, guys, that you will have heard uh, this episode after you heard the episode I did with Jay, where Howard did precisely like Sam. Sam didn't. I know she had seen it before, but she and she knows what I'm talking about. He did slam Doug on the air. So Doug's going to come in and defend himself. And it's it's just exactly what you've heard him say about high pitch Mike, this backhanded, passive aggressive fucking attack. And when Doug comes in, I want you to look specifically at Howard's physical appearance, okay. how he kind of he kind of leans back almost a little bit. And he's almost afraid because someone's calling him on his shit. Well, in good. Person. I, I, I can't wait to see that. And I also think Howard is acting like these people disappeared for two weeks. It was mm-hmm. a show. <laughs> yeah, they abandoned me in the trenches. Fuck. And you seemed all, you were fine. You, again, if it was really that big of a deal, you should have had everything set up and ready to go for everybody to be able to participate, you cheap fuck. Well, we had, well, Jay, Jay talked about his experience being in New York at the time. And he said that his, his coordinator basically said, look, I know you got a young daughter at home and you got family to, to deal with. So just go. Just just go. And I go, that's the mensch move. That's what a normal human being would say and do. And if Howard had any had vested any autonomy and authority into uh, Gary, Gary should have had the OK to say to the people below him, including the Howard TV staff, if they're below him. Yet, yeah, guys, you do. You just stay home. I'm t- I'm telling you, no one's coming in today and make that. And then tell Gary. Gary should have been able to tell Howard. I don't give a fuck. We're not doing the show today in a fucking hurricane. 
normally during natural disasters, like I said, during the blizzard, they don't want you to be open unless it's no. necessities, pharmacies, hospitals, police stations. That's about it. Maybe a grocery store if you can, but mostly rely on your neighbors if you can and just sit the fuck home until this we take care of this because we already got enough problems. And this is why he's anti-union, because if they were union, there's no way they would have been there in us in the fucking heartbeat. And at the end of the uh, because he makes a mention at the end of the episode, as if to say that Howard TV is like like a union and that the organization said, no, we don't want you coming in. And he's like, yeah, but you don't you know, that's, you, know you, you don't have to listen to them. That was his take. Well, yes, we do, because that's our boss. Remember you don't mm -hmm. sign our paychecks. You don't like yep. to be responsible for us when you don't want to be responsible for us. Yeah, I think uh, the the whole staff, what they should have done at some point, I don't know when, but they all should have literally said, we're all not coming in until you treat us properly. See what the fuck you can do now, mister. But I do it is, all myself. Don't we say this all the time, though? This is just another example of they would have been fine if they would have had strength in numbers, but they are all... Mm -hmm so disconnected and afraid mentally and they're abused mentally that they they just couldn't do it at there were so also, many points in time in the show when it when it was jackie leaving and needed more money or yep. when this thing happened it's like come on guys you strength the numbers that, not only that but you've got a weasel like shuli who you know will throw you under the bus with them at a moment's notice if you decide you're going to um, you're going to like, this is going to happen. You don't think he's going to go directly to Howard in an attempt to appease him and try to get up in the organization by being a complete double agent cockroach. Well, that's what he did. And, and I think to just, this would have been the perfect time for them to get together and do just what you said, because people in the audience were getting sick of his shit after Artie. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's hitting, he's on the downslide, the decline of, likability as well with the audience i think so too he didn't come in on monday monday there was nothing happening yeah oh fucking hell and i'm sorry if people think i'm pissed at them i'm not pissed i told people stay home you're not pissed you're not pissed what Opposite Monday. Day, Monday was nothing. We played episode one. We played the blackout CCTV video in in, in uh, you know time lapse. Nothing uh, happened. He, he's not pissed. He just said that he gave life to Mike Morales, <laughs> <laughs> the All Father. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hi, you safe and sound, Doug? Everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank God. Can I explain the facts instead of the... No, no. I don't care. Falsehoods. I told you it's fine. Yeah. No one missed you. Howard. No, no the, one missed you. Okay. It was fine. We functioned fine without I you. I did what I could. The company right. was closed. They didn't want <laughs> anyone coming in. I, you know, went yeah. back and forth to legal and I said, you got, I got to get a crew here. So huh. they were comfortable. The thing they were comfortable with was with the guys in the city. Right. That's what we did. They didn't want people from the outskirts and All the right. suburbs so, to come who's in. All right, so bothering you? You beat the shit out of me with no, falsehoods and bullshit and no, disparaged me for weren't. fucking two days. So that's the you truth, okay? Be, no, here's and the then truth. you'd speak out of both sides of your mouth. Like, you I know people got to protect the family, but why the fuck are they here? Did what you a loser. protect your what? family? Yeah, I did. Okay, did. I have two did. little on kids Monday? and a wife at home. On Monday? Well, Monday, yeah, yeah, you know, in hindsight, there was no storm on Monday. In hindsight, Howard, yeah. this, I went by the forecast and was, you know, oh. listening, and it was supposed to hit at three o'clock at full force in the morning. Well, you do the when show I woke ten up, and then you go home. I'm not going to argue with you. When I woke well, up, I was well, like, "You're arguing. You came in here. I didn't ask for you. <laughs> no, no, about Monday. You just barged in on my show. <laughs> yeah, I'm just barging. You're talking about yeah, me. I'm done. See, at least, Easy, blah, Doug, blah, 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 blah. Well, <laughs> at least, at, at least, Doug had the balls to come in and confront him about it. I like that he said you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. You're saying, oh, yes. protect your family. But, oh, you, where were you? Fuck you. Well, the the only thing I, I hate is that Doug eventually gets battered down. I would have been like, a, you know, you know me. I don't fucking I, when I, I'm like a pit bull when I get a, a point and I'm not going to back down on like certain opinions I have. I'm I'm not above giving my fucking opinions, clearly. And with Wiggy to go in there and hear him go like. What did you hear? I didn't hear anything. And hear him do that whole, that shuffle, that, what did I say? No, no, it's okay. I don't want to. He tries to shout him down. He doesn't argue. He shouts him down again as if to get away from the actual argument because he knows he's on fucking clay. 
Well, it's what everybody does who knows they're not right and they they don't want to hear the opinion. It hurts people who like I oh I don't want to see that video evidence or I don't want to I don't want to know. It's like to, it's you know close your eye or yeah close your eyes close your ears shut your mouth Ralph, like it's just r- all a purposeful ignorance shouting down. And by the way, Doug Goodstein should have stopped should have kept that tempo up that he yes. just had, and then yeah, Howard now- would have backed down. I think he would have. And the other thing is, of course, just keep in mind, guys, when we did the cover, the Ralph is a thief, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> the episodes and they're mostly on pay- one of them's on uh, one of them's on YouTube. The other one's on uh, Patreon. One, the other one's a uh, regular pod bean and Spotify and whatnot. But when he decides, OK, this is going too far. Now we're going to we I'm tired of the argument. It's done already. You know, you think you, you're wrong, whatever. He had to bail when he knew it was going against his buddy, his bum buddy. And. In this situation, same argument, same style of with tactical withdrawal. Yes. Yeah. Like I've got to get away because I'm going to lose this if I continue down this path. Yeah. They, uh, he had to do the same thing with uh, Dr. What's his face, Ablo. Like, you got, oh, yes. I got to get out of this. This is. Nope. It's, it's Which, not going the right way. <laughs> no. Can I defend myself? I no, mean, you, there's uh, nothing to defend. You didn't come in. So I, I, I'm fine no, with I it. I want to explain myself. I'm going to stay. Go there. ahead. I'll be quiet. Uh, thank right, you. Go ahead. Thank you. I have the floor. I, well, thank you. since you're hijacking oh, my show, okay. why don't I, I leave? Because I listened over. for two days as you just you know, you trashed me are and you talked shit about me and Gary, too, which was not right. The point is you were not here. On Monday, listen, the storm was supposed to be full force. And I didn't disparage you. How did I disparage you? Yes, he did. Yes, he did disparage all of them. So imagine being his kids having to deal with this kind of thing. Imagine Allison, what she had to deal with when arguing with this fucking child, this man child. We're watching it with Beth in real time where he's saying, I'm not making you feel bad. You know, I'm just scared of COVID when you know he is bragging her ass all day long about every little thing she does. She is excited to leave the house for anything, like buying a coffee mug, and he's still ragging her ass about if she wore a mask. You know it. And I'm a loser. I didn't I'm, say you're I'm a loser. A pussy. I'm no, a I didn't. Man. I'm a man. I'm a man to protect my family. Pull That's what I, I did. I said you weren't okay? a man. I said you weren't. Oh, oh, I didn't want to stay home and protect my family, right? I don't have any family. You have bad How did you don't. figure that out? How'd you? F- you don't have a family to protect. Your kids are all gone. You have you and Beth, and you have two residences. And the one you do have is fucking Fort Knox in Manhattan. Millennium oh, fucking towers. I don't towers. have any family. Yeah, you do, and you barely <laughs> wanted <laughs> you, to take you, it. Your poor sister you and them. mother <laughs> and father. We, we did cover that, by the way, didn't we? I, I think know, we did. We, we did. We, of we course, did we did. Yeah, of course. That was the in the uh, the the what do you call the screen cap? You're out there. that you need to be. I like that. I'm you not think, mad at you, Howard. I, I just like, think it well, was you're, wrong. You barged in not- and you're starting in with me. You don't think on Monday I didn't want to stay home? Of course I want to stay home. Don't you think legal was concerned about me? He's had 35 years on the air of all kinds of weather. I've come in in all kinds of weather. I got. You've clearly shown you supersede legal on that show. Whenever you want someone gone, they are gone. And if they did tell him, you probably shouldn't come in. It's very dangerous. Oh, I live across the street. Who cares? Nobody else does. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. I have three You're kids probably... at home. I had a wife. I have three kids at home. No, he doesn't. It's they live in Long Island. They're all well. No, one's in the Bay Area. I think uh, em, uh, not Emily. Uh, Deborah lives in the Bay Area at that point. Um, I think yeah, Emily's in still in New York, uh, and and Ashley's finishing college. Yeah, I have three kids at home. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> they don't live. The point is they they stopped living at home ages before this. I In the early 2000s. No, I mean, Ashley was still living with him or she was, she was still living no, with her mother. No, I mean, mother, he moved he out of the house. That's right. They weren't living with him at all. He was seeing his kids on a, yeah. you know, visitation basis, but they weren't ever living there. They might have stayed over a weekend or whatever, but that was it. The most one he had was Ashley. The other two yeah. really didn't want much to do with him. Yeah. So, and we talked about this a long, long time ago the, with, with, the, with the three daughters. Uh, and and Deborah's the one that's the most enigmatic because she doesn't have a, a YouTube channel or Instagram. Emily does. Mm-hmm. And Ashley, I, I don't know if she's at Insta. She might, but she was on Facebook for a while. I, I don't follow the kids and I don't generally care. We tr- yeah, try to neither. keep it away from them. However... Um, he, 
he recently talked on a show. It was a breakdown thing where he talked about my daughter's a doctor and people presumed he meant Ashley and he was conflating like her being a nurse to being a doctor. And I think what, it, what he was talking about was his middle daughter is a doc. She has a doctorate in something like education, but she's oh. not a doctor. Like you would never call her a doctor. Right. That's like calling Jill Biden a doctor. <laughs> right. Well, he so but he, he made it. So I have a, my my daughter's a doctor as if she studied medical school. Yeah. You know, it's a real uh, it's a real doctor. That's like I know a guy. <laughs> 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 that army of fucking people that suddenly appear. Home, I have a house. I have all. I know all about well, it. Kids are all over the country, aren't they? Yeah. They were children <laughs> at one time in his life. I've, I've, so well, what's what does that, that what is, have to do what, with anything? What does that anything? have to do with anything, you fucking knobhead? Oh, I'm so glad Robin in her bed decides to chirp up. They were young at one point. And yeah, and you <laughs> were watching them because he couldn't watch them by himself. And you had to actually, <laughs> Howard <laughs> had to dive into a limo. <laughs> When he thought he heard gunshots or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone, no, someone literally called out to him. Oh yeah, that in, was in, it. No, I, you know, so it was, no, yeah, someone called out to them. And so he ran in while they were giving, doing a potty, portable potty thing for yeah, Emily. <laughs> Robin and Allison were putting poor Emily on a portable potty and Howard was diving into the limo. <laughs> <laughs> Should we play that? <laughs> and locking the doors. Should yeah, we play that audio? I know sure. we've done it. Hold on. Okay, let me see. Because you can't forget that one. Uh, oh. Hold on. Okay, here's the audio, guys. I know we've played it, but it must have been like 100 episodes ago, so it's always worth revisiting. <laughs> and that was his reaction. My other favorite story is the time that NBC had that picnic. Right. Yes. And all of I guess you talk about the dysfunctional family picnic or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The staff went to this picnic, and it was out in, I don't even the Bronx, remember, yeah. it was in the Bronx it's in, in like, a park somewhere, yeah. and everybody was afraid to go there in the first place because it was the Bronx, and we went, and it was fine, and then, uh, you know, Howard was married at the time, and, and Emily was, you know, a toddler, you know, had just been potty trained, and we go back to the car we'd all come together so we go back to the car and emily says she needs to use the bathroom and they had this little potty chair in the trunk of the car so she's using the potty chair in the trunk of the car we're all standing outside of the car all of a sudden we hear someone say howard 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 <laughs> howard jumped into the car and locked all the doors <laughs> His wife, his child, me, and Fred. Oh my God. God. <laughs> Take the kid in the potty. I'm safe. Oh I stood guard, so she was actually able to finish. <laughs> and he was just like, I'm the most important one here. <laughs> it, it, it could have been like John Hinckley. <laughs> he just doesn't care. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the imagery is what's killing me because I have like she I illustrated she she explained it so well and you can just totally see him like dive bombing into the car I, with his feet not even touching the floor of the limo just diving head first in through the window and hitting the lock button <laughs> hitting the lock button with his toe yeah. <laughs> on the way in. I'm not here fuck it's like one of these superhero fucking leaps i mean and but during if, all if, kinds of weather right and if my, you were, my, my listen okay. i did never called you a loser okay. i never did said you weren't a man you're saying that about yourself well, by putting it on me i think i could pull some clips well, it's, pull, yeah. well, he didn't actually say he didn't actually say loser i don't think but he he definitely disparaged doug there's no question and we covered it in the episode with jay guys if you want just re go to go back to that one we're not going to replay it again Come out. Pull the gold, pull that. the clips, and, and then come back not in here. Saying. Pull the clips because you're lying right now. Your not, interpretation. I, I didn't. You, okay, that is my interpretation. If, I'm, if those were the exact words, and I'm sorry. Okay? You're, you're, you're absolutely but, out of but line. But let me explain Monday. Oh. And again, hindsight is, to, you know, I, if I look back now, yeah, I could have come guys, in. So I, every one of you have it said was, something that really disturbs me. Howard doesn't understand we want to protect no, our family. No, I know you get that. I you're a great family, I'm not questioning that. I know. I have a wife. You just did. You absolutely said, Howard, I I like how Howard now all of a sudden has a family when yeah. it's convenient when it suits purpose. because yeah, it suits I never hear about this family 95% <laughs> of the time. 
ever. Ben Ben had a great made a great point one time when he brings up people when he when he interviews people and he asks them about their family, and they ask him about his. He always mentions his mother and father. Yep. Sometimes his sister, never his kids, and never the never. fact that he has a wife and had a, 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 a previous wife. He does not discuss them. He's so don't infantilized exist. in his head that he is still that little boy. Yep. And I can't so wait th- for his mother to die for him to emotionally and psychologically burn down. Fully. Yes, I and I, I'm I'm all all in on that. And I, again, guys, I keep saying if all the girls want financing to put a book together, a tell all on what it was like living with him, the different stages they were with him, I'm all I'm all in. Me too. We seriously, I I thought maybe he would crack a little when Ben died. Then I realized the more we do the show, it's going to be when the mother dies. Yes, that well that that will be a, 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 a an even angrier reaction. It's going to be uh, an unravel. Yeah, Yeah. it's going to be an unraveling that I don't think we've ever seen before. And it's going to be, I I can just see it being very different than anything else. This is a a thing called basically narcissistic collapse, guys. I read I read this on a website called choosingtherapy.com. dot com, and I really wanted was looking for something like what happens to the person involved with the narcissist at their end stage, and often it's some kind of. I read, I read this story about a person that committed suicide because they were in a relationship with a narcissist. And when they died, because they found out this person was cheating on them, the guy, the narcissist, attended the funeral on the last day with the girlfriend he cheated on, he cheated with, and then uh, made out with her in front of the coffin. And people saw this. And they all knew, like, they they, they couldn't, they, people had to be restrained from assaulting this guy, family members and stuff, because they knew he was the reason the girl committed suicide. Oh, my God. It was the most, like, if it was a fake story, my God, it was still just brutally bad to to to, to read. And um, so here it's, it's about the opposite. Like, when the narcissist collapsed, it says, research suggests that people with NPD relied on, on narcissistic supply to re- ensure their needs are met and their superior image is upheld. When the supply is jeopardized, the narcissist can become unhinged. It can, uh, the collapse may be caused by a threat to the narcissist's perception of themselves or others. These threats can stem from mild inconveniences to severe disturbances, making it hard to know exactly what set the narcissist off. For instance, for instance, a friend taking too long to respond to a text or not receiving the promised raise at work can trigger the narcissist. And then the signs, it just says impulsive behaviors, depression, gaslighting, mental breakdowns, anger outbursts, rage, smearing someone's reputation. Does this sound familiar recently? Oh my God. Self-harm behaviors, making accusations, inc- intense anxiety, stonewalling, uh, which is, it says it's a, refers to a narcissist's refusal to communicate with others, allowing them to preserve control by making their challenger feel guilty, confused, or stressed. Wow. So I just thought about this now that Ralph is gone. Ralph, regardless. Uh, oh, by of- the way, sorry. No, sorry. Before you go into that, number 11, suddenly ending a relationship. Oh. A narcissist may end a relationship if it fails to meet their needs. This action, or the narcissistic discard, is often considered the final stage of narcissistic collapse. If they realize their supply is being cut off, they move on to the next victim, but involved, but remain involved in the person's life by spreading a smear campaign or hoovering. Wow. Huh. Well, now that Ralph is gone, I was going to say, Ralph was a cheerleader for Howard, where It didn't matter how stupid Howard looked, how bad an interview was. You were going to get a lie out of Ralph that was going to butter his ass up. Mm -hmm. Now he's gone. Beth is getting sick of his shit. Everybody knows Mm -hmm. it. And I think this is going to weigh a lot more heavier on Beth than it is going to on Howard in a lot of ways. Yes. And so all those things we said about, we would, would we be surprised if she had, if she committed suicide before their marriage collapses completely? The answer to me is certainly not. Right. And I think that uh, if Howard's mother dies now in the recent, in the near future or something, yeah. not having that cheerleader, now having no parents, um, he's losing his supply. Big Fillmore. time. He's yep. losing his supply. And the one supply that he has, Beth, she is hanging on by a thread. Yes. 
This is and this so, is interesting. So let's say, for example, let's let's hypoth- let's do a hypothetical. Uh, uh, Ray maintains like she still sticks around for even a few more years, which would be, <laughs> I think, just brutally bad for him because he's never going to get that supply from her. Right. It'll be negative supply. Let's say Beth leaves him before then. How much does he un- get go unhinged? It's going to be bad. It's going to be Robin's going to take a lot of that. If she's if she's alive for that. That's another thing, too, that's up in the air. Yep. And the other thing is this is getting good. (laughs) Well, think about it. Okay, Gary, Fred and Robin get together, talk. What are they going to do if Howard leaves? If he decides he's going to stop doing it, the implication is they need to do something to maintain something or they want to maintain some kind of show without Howard in the, in, in the interim and thinking Gary needs certain money. He needs, he needs a job still at this point in his life, which is beyond insane. What if, what if Gary goes to like Jimmy Kimmel, how pissed off would Howard be? Would Jimmy ever do that though? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that he would. I mean, like as, as a pity fuck, yeah, he might give him a mercy machine, make him a gopher, make it, it would be funny if he made Gary an intern. <laughs> I mean, didn't he hire Lucas? <laughs> I think I think so. Yes, I think he or he definitely was approached to give Lucas a job. I think he did get a job there, didn't he? Yeah. Um, But um, but the idea that like, okay, if Robin's no longer there, which he doesn't have anything to do with Robin either. And all of a sudden he's going to cut himself off from certain people. Where is he going to get his supply from? It's going to be wilding, maybe. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, you guys tell us what you think, and I, I, if you if you think the unraveling is as as uh, as interesting as we do, please tell us in the comments because again, it, it's not it's not easy listening, but it is fascinating. It is. Yeah. Protect my family. Like I don't want to protect my family. You think I wanted to leave my apartment and leave Beth alone? Who said to me, "Stay home"? Okay. I, you do know, you know there was I love one her time as much as you his, love your you wife. Brought her here. Your actually was safer here. She was wouldn't sitting come. in an apartment and we were in Manhattan and this incredible blizzard came up. Howard said, you guys do whatever you want. I have to get home. Yeah, I mean, but, but I'm not disparaging you for your decision. Okay. But don't attack me. No, I just felt I felt attacked. Okay, that's well, I right. felt attacked. Well, you know, and, and yesterday, attack. right, but yes, Monday morning, you know, the, there was no railroads. Number one, right? Uh, right number right, two. Are we dealing no, with no, this? no. I, I want to explain it. No, this is I what get- see. He can't deal with it. He cannot deal with any kind of blowback because the explanation is going to be logical. It's going to be there was no trains, there was no driving. We had see? a, and he doesn't want to hear it. Nope, not a, not a fucking minute of it. You're trashing me for. I didn't trash you. you I did. said. I said you're not here Monday and Tuesday. And le- Tuesday, highways Tuesday. closed. Well, tunnels, of course. Railroads. I didn't. I mean, I there didn't was no way to you. get in. You said, just, "Why the fuck am I not here?" You, you would have been here. You, you would have been here on Monday. You could have taken a hotel room and stayed in town, but you but, didn't but, choose to. But, and I'm and, fine with okay, that. Okay. I'm not disparaging. There was no plan. That's if he wanted him to get the hotel room. Then he should have blocked off a bunch of hotel rooms right by the radio station, but he left it up in the air on purpose so he could do this fucking gaslighting shit. Yep, there was zero structure, and he cared. He that yes. this this is the thing. A real leader knows it's like a coach. You don't go into a fucking football game going, uh, "Guys, listen, uh, there's a ball, and uh, <laughs> there's a those white things at the end, the, those tall things." Uh, I want you to run with the ball in that general direction without getting touched by the opposition. Does that make sense? Yeah. Howard's Jimmy Dugan. <laughs> the, 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 the fucking Rockford peaches right now. Fucking taking a piss, throwing a tobacco spit and saying and itching his balls in the dugout. You know, this is, uh, I used to use this GIF every, GIF every once in a while. It's one of my favorites of all time. And it's a great, like, wide angle shot of a guy. Be, like, the camera's following this guy as he's jumping off a stage to stage dive into the crowd. And the crowd completely disperses and he does a face plant into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the speed with, with which the guy launches himself in the air, that yeah. makes it all the funnier. And this is the level of organization that's at the Howard Stern show at this point in time so when marcy turk comes in it's a veneer of organization it's the uh, appearance of being organized but still incredibly disorganized because of the dysfunction at the top of the food chain right he cannot organize himself out he can't organize he can't organize himself enough to wipe his own ass 
sure, let alone sure. an organization. Like you no said. way. Yeah. Your options. You took your options. I just thought I heard it differently. Again, I, I, I do question. You know, people but. throw up that I protected my family. What did you do? He didn't what did protect I do? anything. If anything would have happened, you don't know. If, Robin. if nothing happened. But if, if nothing happened, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Talk to the millions of people who lost their homes or flooded out and them. destroyed. I'm yeah, one of them. But you weren't them. there. You weren't there. What a fucking cunt. If, like, it, you, if it happened. It, it's well, your they second didn't know. home. You, you, and, you can't, <laughs> yeah, and you can't read into the future. You can't know that there's not going to be a, as, as big a disaster as they predict, you fucking idiot. Robin has millions of dollars or however much, at least more than the average person. More, and certainly and more than Doug. Her second home. Yes. If not third, I think it was two homes. We're at talking that point. about people who had their like <laughs> apartments hell. flooded, living in a fucking flat. I mean Christ. You don't have a family, Robin. You I would have gotten them apartment. out. I would not have left them in danger. Well, but I stayed wanna, in my wait, home. So Robin's less important. She didn't want to Robin's, protect her home. I'm not saying anyone's she less important. She doesn't want to protect. Of course, she wanted to be with her home, but she came in. But if I had a family, do you think I would have left them at home? Say I'm going to stay here and protect you, like water's coming over the wall, and I can protect you. You're crazy. Of course not. But you would have been. Just, in if you want to protect your family, get them out. Did she just <laughs> say? Uh, but she came yeah. in. Right. No, no, hold, hold, let me put it back. No, no, she said if she had a family, she would have made sure they were out of the house. I know, but he said, but she came in. Go back. Okay, we're how far back here? It's just like two hours. out. Away. I would not have left them in danger. Well, she but I stay I'm one of them. Destroy. I'm yeah, one of them. You weren't there. You weren't there. You don't have a family, Robin. You I would have gotten them apartment. out. I would not have left them in danger. Well, she but didn't I stayed in my home. home. So Robin's less important. She didn't want to Robin's, protect her home. I'm not saying anyone's she less important. She doesn't want to protect her. Of course she wanted to be with her home. She's at home. You're right. That, that's the logic that I've just, keep, I've just keep, forgotten. Keep, keep She's playing. still at home. Keep playing. Yeah. Okay. Keep playing. She came in. But if I had a family, I think I she came in. She came she, in. She's sitting I, in bed. <laughs> I think by the end of this, get Richard is with. This is when Richard comes in and said, "Robin, you're not even here. You're at home." What a fucking asshole! So they're still giving this pretense bullshit of Robin's here, <laughs> right? Even though she's not on cam, like what, like Eric the midget. Left him at home. Say I'm going to stay here and protect you. Like water's coming over the wall, and I can protect you. You're crazy. Of course not. But you would have been in your if apartment. you want to protect your family, get him out. If there's really some sort of danger that you're really concerned about. That's what I'm saying. Go going into the danger to protect right. your family. In the danger, I was at Crazy. home. We were at home. But so you're acting you... like there's going to be danger. I stayed home to protect my family. Robin, I have trees all around my property and stuff. This, this, right. this... Doug, I get it. But it's Monday, fine. let me can, just can explain. You Monday, no, I want to go on no, with the show. No, I'm done. No. Please. Again with the trees. No. They're going to hold up trees. One of us is going to leave the room right now. Okay. Either you or me. <laughs> and I will get up and leave. And you will do the show for four hours. If you think you talking about your trees in your house and protecting your family is interesting, I'm all for it. But I don't have to be here for it. I want to explain. At that point in time, I would have been a lot happier hearing Doug take over the show than listening to Howard's fucking cunty, whiny, mealy fucking shit excuses about everything. We've been on for this whole saga. It feels like I have not. I, I haven't gotten off the Ferris wheel for a year. <laughs> I've been living on a Ferris wheel. Like uh, you, you think if you worked for him, you'd definitely be like addicted to something, right? addicted to something yeah but i would have been too i would my smart mouth would have i i can't you, be you would have got fired yeah i my i can't deal with this doug sitting here right now like doug started off in the right tenor and tone you know how i am i can't deal with shit like this this is not for me <laughs> to you why monday morning i'm, I'm I wasn't proud here. of you for not coming we to work and protecting it. your family you i didn't get hear it, it. i yes, i heard did. enough okay the company said we heard it right right uh, and I abided by the company. I wasn't uh, going to be some what? rogue asshole right. and then put myself in danger Absolutely. in the company and liability. And you Absolutely. attached to that company right. with the business we Absolutely. do together. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Explain. Just All right. I'll go back and do what you do. <laughs> I mean, really, get to work. You know what, too? The, fan, the fans have been giving him so much shit online for this, on Twitter, on Facebook, on whatever Everywhere. platform. Stern Everybody knows everybody knows how they the audience feels about this whole thing so that would have given me the confidence to go up there like if i were doug i would have just let it rip because you have the audience behind you people would have been cheering listening to this uh yeah i believe so they would it, it, that's that, that that's part the part of the movie when the heroes like get reinforcements come in that kind of thing yeah yeah <laughs> I, I feel the, I feel your explanation I, is valid. Nothing. Was, I apologize if you were. We offended. did everything I can, and because of me, we had a crew here to cover the show. 
It would have been like Matilda at the end of the movie when she starts moving shit and the trunch bowl gets fucking sent out of the school and everyone's cheering. That's Hold what on. it would have been like. You know, you you okay. This is why you know I don't have a fucking child. <laughs> you brought up a, you made a Matilda reference, <laughs> but Matilda is that Matilda Grimby or whatever? Is that is that the uh, from the kids book? It, yeah, Matilda from Roll Doll, where she Roald has Dahl, special yeah. yeah, and the trunch bowl's yeah. terrible. They put them in the kids in the chokey. Everybody hates her, and then at the end, the kids basically run her out of the school. It's amazing. You know what I had in my head when you said Matilda? I'm thinking, is she talking about Clifford the Big Red Dog? <laughs> <laughs> I got my book kids' too. books mixed up. That, that was my goal, and that is my position. And, and that is what I was looking out that. for you. Thank Whether you. I was here or not, I was home listening, doing what I could have done here. I, I, we didn't cut something? shows. We can't cut shows. We're out of power I'm downtown. Glad, There's no daily shows. I'm glad. <laughs> Wayne <laughs> Wayne was, uh, by the way, Wayne loves, he he finally, now that he's got a job, that he now he's got a sh- like a position where he can listen to the show. He's binging on QF, by the way, and he loves, oh, absolutely. Lo- and Wayne loves, uh, you know, Boston. I love I love his accent. I know some people are not a fan, but that, I love you know, he's not, he's not going to change his voice, guys. So it's a kind of, it's a kind of pointless complaint. Sorry. Um, and nothing that you can do. We can't give him Howard's compression and make him suddenly like fucking Welsh. Um, the, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the, the, the thing, but something like, uh, I, I, I think you said it was in whatever the episode was. You said, does Howard even know what a homonym is? And I think I said he knows the first four letters. <laughs> <laughs> he loved that. He said he was crying. <laughs> That's quick. <laughs> you we got it on it. tape and that's what we needed Thank to do you. and i'm glad you explained that and you want to know something now that you explained it i apologize yeah, right. and i'm uh, you're, you're just so condescending to I'm, me. Not, no, I'm, you I'm apologizing i'm getting you a ribbon i do and you hear what i said <laughs> I'm off camera laughing. <laughs> well, more recently, more recently, more recently was uh, he said Mick Jagger, and I said change the J to an F, and that's Howard. I was fucking dead. Don't do this to me. I get okay, all red, not, not, and then I have before. to fall. I have to fall under my desk for like five minutes. <laughs> I'll get rid of it. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to give you an award and, tomorrow. And it's like you treat me like shit. Like, no. I haven't been here with Gary. You treat I'm Gary like shit. I'm sending you a ribbon. Oh, now you're worried about Gary. No, I, I heard you're Gary's his defender. Rapid, what is Gary, a woman? He can't no. stand up for himself? What are you, a man yeah, and he's I a woman? I can't say anything right. All right, look. <laughs> and you, and, and, you know what? This And this is what a mensch Doug is. I don't even think he has that great of a relationship with Gary, and he's still sticking up for Gary. Good for him. And <laughs> what is Howard, a man? What are you so afraid of that dragon tat coming at you? <laughs> Fuck yeah. It's like watching here. Look, if the Yakuza Doug, are after us. If I were Fuck. Doug looking at that etch a sketch of an arm, <laughs> I'd be so not intimidated. <laughs> Imagine a tattoo artist being asked to put a fucking like uh, the the map of the USA on a straw. That's how it's are. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is Florida. <laughs> it looks like a hair. <laughs> you know I love I you. You know I'm you. passionate about the job, and you question my loyalty and dedication. I did not question your loyalty. And that's not that, that. That's a little hurtful. And you want to Doug, put the sound effects, cra- uh, Fred? Go ahead. Put what the do you crying, want? Crying. Put the asshole. Call me an asshole when I walk out of the room, crying. like you did the other day. I mean, go ahead. Wow! 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 wow. All right. Thank you. Um, you're hijacking my show. And I'm I am because I'm def- now. Now I have the platform to defend myself. Right. Go ahead. Effect. I'm going to keep. Quiet. I'm done. No. No. I'm oh, done. You're done. No. Yeah, I think you have more to say. Go ahead. And you'll get your ribbon tomorrow. Go ahead. What kind of what color? I'm getting you a ribbon that says number one employee. No, I just want you to understand where I was coming no, from. I understand. And this, this Go is... tell that to JD. Oh, God. Ooh. Yeah. I, I, this would be the perfect time. You know when Artie was throwing shit in the studio? Doug, yeah. whip those headphones like and a CD. you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking whip them. Take a fleet of CDs and hopefully decapitate this wicked piece of shit. My God. God. <laughs> Go tell it to JD. He'll understand. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. You need, you ever the Billy you'll song? need subtitles to understand, JD, but yeah, go ahead. We'll all go down together. You remember that song? No, no, Ralph. No, yeah. One of my favorite songs. All right, get out of here. Mine too. All right, come on. <laughs> Doug Goodstein. <laughs> Explaining and finally having a platform mm. to explain him. Thank God he has a platform. Thank <laughs> God. What a platform. And what an explanation it was. <laughs> Listen, I love him. Mm. I love the guy. He's a terrific guy. How many years has he been with me? 
too bad. Long time, like, yeah. Yeah, long time. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> no. And there's surely the uh, the guy that's, he's almost like a guy installing cable there, and he just happens to get on mic from time to time. But <laughs> It really is like those random clips in an Adam Sandler movie when they pivot to a clown. It's just like, oh, what is that doing there? <laughs> yeah, it's it, like he hits it, he hits it with his elbow accidentally, and all of a sudden you hear. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the third mic in here. <laughs> Too many years. Too many years. It's not that he didn't try to get away from me. No one to hire him. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Dougie. Oh. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't complain if you didn't love him. Yeah, I missed him. I wanted him with me. You should be glad you noticed he was gone. I want yeah, to say Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate everyone who came in. I appreciate everyone who works on the show. I really, I honestly hold no animosity or ill will. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rickles. <laughs> oh, Shuli pipes up. I'd be like, oh, wait, did we invite a B-boy here for, <laughs> for fucking, a, for a guest? Does he want to put no, a boombox no. on his shoulder? <laughs> Loser. Toward anyone who couldn't be here. Honestly, <laughs> I really don't. And I love Doug and I love Gary and I love everybody. I'm full of love. You love Scott <laughs> Salem? You... <laughs> Is that a clip for the drops? I'm full of love. <laughs> the what scarf. the world needs now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this outfit. Oh, fuck. I'm full of love. <laughs> Oh my God! Slow down, fact, Robin. He never. You know what? He always lives up to my expectation of him. <laughs> he never disappoints me, and that's what I love about Scott Salem. You expect nothing, and he comes through. Uh, it's <sighs> okay. Um, that was that was painful to listen to. That's a fake forced Shuli laugh. Yeah. Like that. That's that's something that I've heard Shuli. That when Shuli la laughs, it's often on the wrap up show, and some it's very rarely legitimate. It just seems a little too concentrated you know what i mean like mm -hmm. like pain like it like it would pain someone to imitate that laugh you know what i mean yes and and nothing was really funny there no it wasn't and doesn't shuli sound bitter uh yeah and i think what what's weighing on his mind is okay this is not going to turn out to be worth it because i'm not getting laughs and i've just alienated the entire back office yeah it's sinking in yeah i think so it's sunday and i've made a decision i'm not coming in like <laughs> But, but 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 the storm hasn't hit yet. It's all right. I have to stay here and protect what I love. Well, he has a mechanism in place where he makes these decisions. I had to protect my family. <laughs> I wonder what his mechanism yeah. is. And I want to apologize <laughs> for my wife for not staying home and protecting her. <laughs> I didn't protect my family. I didn't either. I'm right. sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Are they still here? Uh, no, they yeah. washed away two days so, ago. <laughs> but what this really just shows is that Howard is on the same level as Shuli. So do you yes. really want to be in the Shuli and Howard camp? Or do you want to be in the Gary, Doug, Scott Salem camp in this situation? Because I'd rather be in that camp. <laughs> on, on a base level, who would you rather like have a coffee with? Sh Doug or Shuli? Um, Doug. Like in a heartbeat. I mean, I know he gets he gets the uh, the bu the bug eyes, uh, you know, criticism and all this. But then the baby clothes, which was a non argument, that was just some bullshit move so Shuli could get in studio. I've realized that over the years now. Any most of the time when Shuli was involved with something, it was because he was desperate for fucking airtime. I was thinking about this. How much setup does Shuli need to perform to even hit anything? Like. He needs to interview the whack Packers. He needs yep. to have Doug. He needs to have Artie just sat there and it came up organically. That's talent. Well, yeah, and I, I, it's no different. Like, there's a very big parallel, and Len and I, Len brought it up actually in an episode we recorded about. Uh, I think I don't know if it was Shuli Bass, but he talked about Shuli a little, and he said if he doesn't have a bunch of retards to 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 work off of, or a bunch of cronies that he claims mm -hmm. he's paying uh, to do his, you know, stuttering John show or whatever, uh, on his own, you saw what happened on his show. He had no listenership. No, because he doesn't have anything him. to say. 
No, and I mean, he does. It's not like he was keeping up with world events and telling you what's happening in the Gaza Strip. Instead, he's telling you how you know how much he's got the comedy, his finger on the comedy pulse of Alabama. Oh, so, so thrilled! Fucking hell, <laughs> surely, but surely got airtime. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, they understood. She understood. Yeah. So, uh, and really, thank you, Doug. And you've set a good example. You have to protect your family. You're right. Fred did not protect his family. No, I did not. No. And I don't know why Doug shit on me. Go ahead, play your sound effect. Oh, he was Doug, pissed at everybody. I was letting you fucking have your peace. And you take a shot at me for what? Because he doesn't like you. I guess I not. Because like you know what, Fred? I you guess, were here I and guess, he wasn't. Yeah, I was He's here and you, you weren't. Right. Thanks, Doug. Like one Thanks, thing, Doug. You know what? Do you know what? One thing to attack me, but to attack Fred, one of the hardest working guys in show business. I, I mean, that's. To... I'm now. I'm pissed. He sits here. He doesn't make a peep. Right. <laughs> doesn't make a peep. The guy sitting there, he gets like a shrapnel hit. <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, well, Hardest yeah, working yes. guy pressing buttons. Pressing <laughs> buttons, yeah, of existing fucking audio clips, literally sound drops. It, when you press the G, <laughs> G flat on a piano, you know, you're really doing some heavy lifting. But it's also, I understand, Fred didn't play a sound effect. Doug was right. being defensive because he was being attacked by Howard. And he was looking at Fred, probably thinking he's getting, because he knows how the show works. And he it's mental torture. Works. He knows right. how the show works. Give him some and, fucking slack, Fred. And by the way, Fred yeah. sounds like a maniac. Well, well, yeah, well, there's no one with thinner skin than Fred on that no show, shit. aside from Howard. After you, when you get past Howard, like, think about him. Stuttering John, uh, uh, Robin. Gary might have the thickest skin out of everybody because he's clearly not taken an Uzi and brought it into work and just wiped everybody out yeah, by now. And he should have at some Maybe. point. Um, uh, so there's Robin, Fred, Howard, um, Stuttering John. Uh, who else? I'm trying to think who else that's, that's really got thin skin. Jesus Christ. Jackie was actually pretty Teflon for the most part. It was only yeah. when they started going after his money issues, you could tell it bothered him. Yeah. Um, I'd say Lisa G was a little skin, th uh, thin skinned. Uh, possibly, uh, John Hine, maybe, I don't know. He was so milk toast. And by the way, uh, just recently listening to some of his, <laughs> he, he, if you want to talk to someone who sounds Jason, like they Jason were just AI, Jason's super thin skinned. Yeah. Um, Ross, <laughs> Ross Zapin. Oh, <laughs> he's the biggest pussy in the bunch. He's the biggest loud mouth, thin skinned asshole. Yeah, without question. It's like, I, get, I, get, I get the shit splash. Fred, Doug doesn't have enough class to say, but I'm going to say it to you. Right. Thank you for being here. And thank you for not you know, necessary. And thank I'm you for not my... blowing up on, on Doug when he did that horrible thing to you just I'm now. doing my oh, job. Fred, I'm but... sorry, Fred. I oh, we'll now the apology. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. A little oh. late, a little late. Talk about condescending. Yeah, you were killed yeah, really. in a drive-by shooting, but he's Talk sorry. Talk about condescending. Oh, oh, and I love you, Howard, and I love Fred, okay? <laughs> what <laughs> God, that microphone is just otherworldly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's unbelievable. <laughs> what a snob you are. <laughs> would, you, would you come back in at the 8 o'clock hour and give your, your explanation? Again? Uh, yeah. A lot of people yeah. calling in, they missed it. What? <laughs> they want to hear that Cantor yeah. story from a couple I, weeks ago. He so. doesn't love me. Oh, you know what I'm afraid of right now? You know, trees could still fall on Doug's house, and he's not there it to protect could. Yeah, there's still winds oh. out there. Of course. He should go back home right now. I, oh, fuck's sake. And, and Fred, by the way, the only reason... Howard is now thanking him and defending him is because Howard's being attacked. He needs yep. somebody in the boat with him. He was so happy Doug threw that little dig because now he can, oh, I can turn over to the guy I ignore usually. <laughs> or or outright this. fucking, <laughs> outright fucking just, you know, shit on. Yeah, on a daily basis for no yeah. reason. But now all of a sudden he's my bro in this boat. <laughs> yeah, he he would just he's just as easily pull you from the boat or put his foot on your head while you're struggling to get out your head above water. Oh, my God. Fred's sleeping in a box beneath the boat. And now yeah. he, all of a sudden he just lifted him up to see the sunlight for a second. But don't worry, Fred, he'll push <laughs> you right back down. <laughs> Fred is the blow up doll that Howard brings with him to the movie theater to make it seem like he's got a date. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> the fucking, anyway, the fucking the HOV lane or whatever, like yeah, the traffic yeah. lane. 
<laughs> more or less. Anyway, guys, we're going to wrap this up. We hope you've enjoyed it. Um, with, there's lots more to go through, um, but uh, not lots more, actually. There's only one episode, and that's all <laughs> mostly wrap up show. More, I'm getting off the Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to stick on the scrambler. Anyway, thank you guys for sticking through this. We love you. And, uh, if you if you love the Patreon and you're on that on board with that, by the way, or if you haven't, you're missing out. Please get on that. Um, we've got loads of content. The uh, swag on T Public as well is really good. It's still holding up months after I've been hard washing some of those things, and it's like you know I I might have to take an axe to get rid of some of the prints if I you know if I Rick wanted to just to split wore them. his QF shirt to work yesterday. <laughs> oh, the we have ladies and gentlemen, we have full flotation. Yeah, he loves yeah. it. You know, you know, does he know the reference? I don't know, but he wears it and he loves it. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So it involves uh, Sam's least favorite fucking topic, scat, which unfortunately James T <laughs> clipped a little of. He said, just to be forewarned, tell Sam you may want to skip this part. <laughs> oh, so sweet. I mean, such yeah. thoughtful fans. Anyway, guys, take care. We love you. Bye. Cool. What's your email address? It's, uh, you got a pencil? Yeah. It's okay. It's a lang. Okay. Dot slash org at Ted sucks cock backslash Teddy is a fruit. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. All right. Thanks for your call, Jack. Thanks. Good luck with that email. <laughs>